I'm Rose Della, the Artistic Director and Principal of the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. CIT is a post-secondary performing arts training centre. We offer a three and four year full-time conservatory style education. Our program is designed to connect theatre training with traditional and contemporary Indigenous cultural practices to advance artistic development, industry and business practices, and ultimately to cultivate professional opportunities. You will come here to train, to learn, to grow, to become the emboldened and inspired voices of tomorrow, the new generation of passionate Indigenous culture creators to tell your stories in your voice. Bonjour. Bidwa a gishko kwe dishnikaz megaze do dem. We are grateful to live and work and learn on this land and acknowledge the traditional caretakers of this land the Huron-Wendat, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabe. Chimigwech caretakers, Chimigwech kakamekwe. Hello, Ani, and welcome to the Center for Indigenous Theatre's program info session for August 4th. We're glad you can join us today so that we can introduce you to CIT and what it's all about. My name is Jasmine. And my name is Kate. We are part of the administrative team here at CIT. We hope you're excited as we are for the upcoming school year. Speaking of which, stick around so you can learn more about how to apply and let us know in the comments if you have any questions. If you're watching us right now, you probably have some questions about the Centre for Indigenous Theatre, or as we like to say, CIT. We're here to answer those questions. We'll tell you a little history on CIT, what the program is about, and what the school year would look like, and what we do to keep you safe and as well as how to apply to get into our program. During our video today, you will get a sneak peek at some of CIT's past creations. Also, we're able to have an interview with our alumni, Jennifer Podemski. So make sure you stay tuned. To help give you some background on CIT, we're going to kick off with a quick history lesson. CIT was founded by James Bowler and was originally a six-week program called Native Theatre School. The Native Theatre School was then renamed Centre for Indigenous Theatre in 1994. We went on to become a full-time program in 1999 and then expanded to a three-year program in 2002 and added a fourth year in 2018. If you're still wondering what CIT is really about, the Centre for Indigenous Theatre is a post-secondary program that provides training in acting, voice, movement. We also offer cultural classes that are focused on dance, song, and oral history. We have partnerships across Canada that we're able to share experiences with throughout the year. Our students are immersed in land-based teachings with the Bajmik, storytellers in Mantuani and Onomatogsi um, in Nipissing First Nation. Now it's time for a special performance from our first year students. Enjoy the show! Thank <laughs> you. 
we are connected entities in this world, rooted deeply to the earth and everything that happens here. The year is 2020. The year everyone thought that they'd get things right. The year I thought I was going to figure everything out. A new chapter in this book of life. To connect back to my culture, the land, and to better relationships with others. But 2020, a very tough year for any attempts to reconnect back to our roots. Now we had to adjust to a whole new way of life, find new ways of engaging with our heritage through a socially distanced lens, searching for fresh methods to get back, reminiscing about the old ways that we took for granted, my culture, my way of life, this is a slap to the face, a wake-up call. How could I sustain and uplift myself while the world seemed to be ending right before my eyes? No social events, hockey, ceremonies, celebrations, and definitely no powwows. I was way too close to losing my head. Searching for different means, different ways to connect, back, back, way back to the original teachings. Look within. To gain that knowledge, I had to look within. To seek that knowledge, I used the medicines for guidance. I had to look within. Is this what it means to be indigenous in 2020? The creator gave us a challenge. I took it on with open arms. All it took was a pandemic for me to figure it out. A blessing in disguise. I truly am grateful. Wow, that was great. Thank you, Kihu. What did you think, Jasmine? That was really awesome. It's so cool to see the students grow creatively during their time here at CIT. If you're interested in applying, we would like to remind you to please visit our website indigenoustheater.com to find out more information on how you can become a student at CIT. In the meantime, we're, med we're ready to move on to our next performance. Take a look. When I was six, I remember playing outside with my sister and one of the neighborhood kids. She was white. I remember her saying, Indians don't pay taxes. You're lucky. My sister said, no, we're not, and went inside and told my mom. My mom came out and talked to my friend about what she said. I felt embarrassed. I didn't want my mom to confront my friend, and I didn't want my friend to think less of me because I didn't find it a big deal. I knew what she said was wrong, but I didn't think my mom should get mad at her. At that time, I was just more focused on keeping friends. I was surrounded by Jagannash. In the second grade, my teacher would call my mom in for meetings to discuss my progress in class, or in her eyes, lack thereof. She told my mom a lot of the other Indian children she had taught in the past also struggled to read. And that has forever been embedded in my mind. In the fifth grade, I saw Idle No More on the news. It was the first native protest I remember seeing. I grew passionate about the protest and what it stood for. We were supposed to write an article as if it were to go in the paper about a current event, and I chose to write about Idol No More. In the sixth grade, I hit puberty and my mom bought me my first bra. Afterwards, I remember sitting with her in the car for a long time because she was telling me how dangerous it was to be a young indigenous woman. She told me how many of her sisters, cousins, aunties have gone missing. Don't trust anyone. You can never be too careful, she said. Then in the eighth grade, I was telling my white friend about missing and murdered indigenous women, and she told me it was a hoax. Millions of other women go missing each day, not just native women. I hated what she said. I was so hurt and angry, and I just cried in front of her because I was furious, but I couldn't defend myself. I knew what she said was wrong, but I felt so powerless and I didn't know enough to explain. I stopped being friends with her. 
I decided to start educating myself out of spite and out of fear that if I was in a situation like that again, I'd know what to say. As I grew older, I gathered more and more knowledge of my culture and people. We have survived hundreds of years of mass genocide, hundreds of years of war, abuse, inequality, and violence. They put our children through residential schools, tearing families apart, stripping children of their language and culture, then sticking us onto reserves and reservations where if you leave your home, you're out of place, unwelcomed, and judged. If you don't leave the reserve, then you're a low life. I often fear for my life whenever I step out of the house alone holding my keys in my hands when men approach me in public, preparing myself for the worst because you can never be too careful, sending my Uber info to my boyfriend, sending my location anytime I leave the house at night because you never know. To this day, we still fight for our rights. We fight to eat, have clean drinking water, for justice for our missing and murdered people. We fight for our land back. Growing up, I was always told I wouldn't amount to much. I was dumb, I couldn't read, probably wouldn't graduate high school and end up as another lazy ending where working a shitty minimum wage job, babies hanging off both arms, blowing my money on booze. But here I am. I moved out of my mom's house at 17 years old to chase my dreams of becoming an actor. Before I moved out, I worked my ass off to save money. Now I pay my own bills, buy my own groceries, all by myself here I am going after what I crave most in life. I come from a strong line of women, women who made themselves out of nothing into something who inspires everyone they come across. No matter what hurdles life has coming for me, I've learned to never give up. I learned that from my indigenous family. We are not lazy, we are not quitters, we are beautiful, inspiring, and strong, and resilient. I chose the color red as my theme for this look. Red lipstick was actually banned for women a long time ago because men believed it was color prostitutes or hookers wore. Hence why most people thought the color was taboo or promiscuous. But a red dress is used to represent missing and murdered indigenous women. It's a bright, beautiful, vibrant color. And some tribes believe the color red can be seen by spirits. By wearing red, we can call back the spirits of our missing and murdered sisters and brothers and let them be at peace. To me, red represents us indigenous people, our power. Bright, vibrant, you can see us coming from miles away. Red makes our voices loud. That showcase was definitely not something to miss. Thank you, Pearl. What did you think? Give us a like if you enjoyed the show. Want to know what the upcoming school year will look like? First year students will start school in September where they will begin with an orientation period introducing them to CIT and the wonders of living in Toronto. Students will then enter a full-time training with a winter break in between their studies. Our first years will then continue training from January until May leading up to graduation. Due to COVID-19, CIT has special protocols that have been put into place. This includes mandatory social distancing and facial coverings, as well as screenings before entering CIT studios, sanitization of all surfaces and props, the health and safety of our students, faculty and staff members is utmost important to keeping the CIT community safe. As they th say in theater, the show must go on. That may leave you wondering what your class schedule might look like this coming year, school year. As our current health and safety regulations continue to develop, your training may be influenced by COVID-19. With restrictions lifting, you can see term one and two schedules include 100% in-person training. You have a variety of classes at CIT, including dance, voice, physical theater, singing, indigenous theater history, stage combat, and story creation. It's now time for an interview with one of our alumni, Jennifer Podemski. Enjoy. My name is Jennifer Podemski, and I am a filmmaker, writer, director, actor, and I am a CIT alumni. So I went to CIT on a special program. Um, I don't recall like if there was an actual graduation or certificate or anything like that. Um, 
but there was a sort of a small group of us. The program, the CIT program that I went to, I don't know if it ever happened again after this time, but it was, uh, it was uh, I think, six week program at the Banff Center for the Arts. Um, there was a very small group of us, like six or eight people. Um, it was an incredible experience because it was like a deep dive into like indigenous expression in theater and the performing arts. Um, so we sort of night and day, all, all day long explored um, what it was to be uh, an indigenous sort of performer and storyteller and how, how we are sort of set apart from storytelling in a mainstream way. So, yeah, I would say that it was one of the f sort of the most transformative experiences of my of my career because it happened at a time when I was very impressionable and it was, you know, I had already had some experience in front of the camera and I I trained as a theater artist my my whole life, like I was in the theater since grade 3, you know, performing and doing shows and plays and musicals. So I was a theater performer. But what I guess CIT offered me was that very culturally uh, specific experience that I and so many others were so badly, you know, desiring and chasing after. And we were very lucky to be a part of it. Um, I remember I wasn't there but CIT had a, an award ceremony that happened on a boat in, on Lake Ontario. It was a big party. Uh, and for some reason, I don't remember where I was. I might have been away shooting. But um, I won the James Buller uh, Award for, for uh, theater performance. And I remember feeling so... I still have it. It's somewhere in packed away still because <laughs> we just moved. But... Um, I'm very proud of that award because it was my first award and my first recognition um, of the work that I was doing and it was from my community. So I remember it being very, very special and unfortunately I wasn't there to, to receive it. But um, yeah, CIT will always hold a very special place in my heart, especially, you know, that specific experience. You know, I never went to the farm. I never did any of those things that Herbie and, you know, all those like original theater people from CIT got to do. Um, this was a, just a unique experience that only the group of us, you know, will will remember and share for the rest of our lives. I, I think. the The best advice I have is, you know, if you want to, if you want to be a playwright, a director, an actor, or someone who puts on and presents theater, all you have to do is do it. There, there really are no rules, right? This is, especially if, if you have people around you who can help you, even if it's by yourself, it's easy, easy to access information on how to, um, you know, structure a play. But ultimately, really, what, it, what is it about? It's about expression of an idea that, you know, impacts a group of people, an audience, and engages them in a way that will transform them, you just really need an audience. And even if that audience is one person, right? You just do it. And once you do it, you're gonna to wanna to do it again. And then you just keep doing it. And one day you realize, oh, I, I really wanna do this on a, on a bigger level. But it's, it's easier to start small than to dive in and you know, realize like that you're way over your head. Well, I think, you know, stories, traditional stories, as, as they relate to being sort of uh, translated or interpreted into a story that's accessible to a wider audience, each person has to, has to go about the protocol of, of asking permission for those stories. That's, I think, you know, I don't know what anyone else's protocol is, but when you're utilizing um, specific traditional knowledge, then I think there should be structures in place that you know how to ask for that story and then help the audience understand where that story comes from. Yeah, so I recently launched an Indigenous women's content platform, which is content specifically in the screen-based media sector. Um, and I'm, 
I'm absolutely, you know, calling out to all people, women and all other, everyone to subscribe at shinenetwork.ca and see what we have going on. It's, it's specifically directed right now at screen creators, but um, eventually, you know, I'd like to become as innovative, innovative as possible to include uh, stories, digitized stories from, you know, all kinds of uh, storytellers. So I think visiting the website is a really good start. Subscribing is a great thing. The more people that subscribe helps me go out there and raise money. So uh, I just want to, I just want to create a space that uh, allows Indigenous women to be celebrated and to feel like they have a platform for their stories to be told. Jennifer Podemski is awesome. They're just one of the amazing contributors CITA has had the pleasure of learning with. Maybe one day we'll be interviewing you. Speaking of applying, let's go over, let's go over some of the application requirements needed to become a student here at CIT. You must identify as First Nation, Métis, or Inuit. You must be 18 years of age or older. You need to have a grade 10 English level or higher. Have an interest in acting, movement, self-discovery, and theater, as well as an interest in exploring Indigenous culture and knowledge. <clears throat> now that we've gone over requirements, here are important documents that you are required to submit when applying to the Center for Indigenous Theater. They include an updated resume, a 500-word essay expressing your interest in theater in coming to CIT, two references that can vouch your interest in theater, a photocopy of your health card, and an audition video of you doing some script work. Not sure what we mean by script work? We've created a video to help you out. Take a look. Hi, I'm Sam Twin. I'm a fourth year student here at Center for Indigenous Theater. Hi, I'm Teresa Kutnaif, and I'm also a fourth year student at the Center for Indigenous Theater. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do your monologues and get them sent into CIT. Yes, so first find an age appropriate monologue for yourself. Uh, use something from the indigenous canon, uh, something like from Thompson Highway, Drew Hayden Taylor, uh, Kenneth T. Williams, do you have any more? Keith Barker, Alanis King, and if you have any troubles finding anything like that, you could email CIT and we'll provide you with a monologue. So Sam, what did you do for your um, audition into CIT? I did uh, Ivic from Thunderstick by uh, Kenneth Williams. What about you? What did you do? I was sent a collection of different uh, story pieces from Coyote City. What to wear? Uh, wear something simple, neutral colors, something that you're comfortable and confident in. Yep. And you know, it does, there's not really a time limit for it, but uh, it should be around three minutes. If you have any other skills that you want to show, like singing, dancing, hand drumming, anything and everything, feel free to submit it. But you do have to have a monologue. Unless, of course, you're a storyteller and you have a story. Uh, then you could submit that instead of the monologue, but no accents, please. And the most important thing is to have fun. And if you stumble, that's okay. Yep. You can do it over and over as many times as you feel. Have any other difficulties like doing your, your monologue or audition? Uh, probably the hardest part was memorizing it all. And uh, I had somebody film it for me. I did not know that it was best to film it with a neutral background, so I filmed it just in a living room and there was a lot of uh, things in the background, but it worked out. And you don't need a professional camera. Uh, we're doing this on an iPhone 10. You can stack it up on some books or put it on a table, whatever you gotta do. As long as it's capturing basically from half of your torso up so we can see your shoulders and your head. You could have a, a relative or somebody hold the camera for you and you could just send that into CIT. Have fun. Once you are accepted to CIT, we have some ongoing requirements needed in order to stay as a student. First, you are expected to be on time and present for all classes. 
Tuition cost each year is $3,750. So you are, ex you, so you must be actively searching for funding. If you're unable to receive band funding, there are other organizations you can submit applications to for funding. These include, but are not limited to, Inspired Foundation, Dreamcatcher Charitable Foundation, Métis Nation of Ontario, Canada Post, Mississaugas of the Credit, and other local organizations. If you are in need of funding application assistance, contact us at the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. No student is ever turned away due to lack of funding. Hey Jasmine, do you have any advice for future students? I'd say it's best to apply sooner rather than later. We want to meet you, and if you need assistance with the application process, give us a call. Also, please don't forget to follow on us on Instagram, Twitter, and like us on Facebook. This is the best way to keep up with things all CIT. Before we go, we would like to thank our funders. With their generous support, we are able to provide a school for our students. The Department of Canadian Heritage, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council, Ms. Waybeek Aboriginal Employment and Training, Hastings Park Foundation of Rights and Freedoms, Ontario Arts Foundation, the Toronto Arts Foundation, and Fringe Festival. Thank you for attending our program info session if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel to catch upcoming shows. We hope to, to see, see you next school year. year. Bye. Bye.